welcome back to my channel. So I bought this bad boy, the Ninja Foodie Max 9-in-1 Multi Cooker on Black Friday a couple of weeks ago and I shared it on my Instagram story. They had this deal running on it for the week of Black Friday and I was so surprised at how many messages I had about this. Bearing in mind, I'm not strictly a food blogger, I just pretty much always share what I'm having for lunch or cooking or whatever on my Instagram story. And so many people, I think there must have been more than 25 different people that messaged me saying they either bought this because I mentioned it on my story or they'd already got one or they just have something similar. And I was blown away by all the questions. But one that popped up a lot was people saying that once it arrived, it was sat in the box for like a week and they were too scared to use it. And I totally get that it is quite overwhelming at first the box when it arrives is massive and it like it's like twice or maybe a bit more the size of this and it's really big it's super heavy i started using mine a couple of days after i bought it because i didn't want there i just didn't want it to sit in the box and me to just be like oh i'm too scared to use it like i don't want it to just sit and gather dust and be one of those kitchen gadgets so i kind of threw myself in at the deep end and like most things in life once i'd familiarized myself with the settings and stuff like that and read up a bit about it then i was just like let me wing it but yes i found it overwhelming too and when i opened up the box there was like loads of bits of paper, so which is really good. This is like a recipe book, but I've had a flick through and a lot of them aren't vegetarian recipes or they just don't seem like food that I would cook. So I've kind of disregarded this. Although there is something about in the back telling you how long to like steam certain vegetables and things like that, which is great. And there's also these other bits of paper. These two are really helpful. So I've never owned a pressure cooker. I've always been a bit nervous about using one because I've seen one explode in my parents' kitchen when I was younger and I just don't even understand how they work. It's a bit terrifying. So I was never really convinced about this. And this is really good, this leaflet, which you probably can't see because if you've never used a pressure cooker, they have a water test that you can do for the first time you use it. And that really kind of put my mind at ease that this isn't really going to like blow away like the lid is actually locked <laughs> once it's on so it is pretty safe unless you do something wrong or the seal is broken so that's really good and I would highly recommend doing that first probably even if you have used like a traditional pressure cooker before just because this is different and this booklet I find the most helpful because I literally leave it in the cupboard next to my thing and refer back to it all the time because it literally tells you how to just use all the functions. So this is a nine in one, like I said, you can use it for pressure, steam, slow cook and cook your own yogurt. I'm not gonna be cooking my own yogurt. Sear or saute, air crisp, grill, bake, roast and dehydrate. I've used all but three, the slow cook, steam and dehydrate. I set myself a challenge on my Instagram story and I said, I don't want this to be one of those gadgets that just sit and gather dust so I'm going to try and use every single function. There's eight in total within a week or two. And I think I'm doing pretty good so far. It's been five days and I've used, or six days maybe, and I've used all but three. Anyway, you obviously get loads of different types of these. So the one I have is seven and a half litres and it cooks for up to six people. You may be thinking, there's only two of you living in this house. But I like to batch cook and I just put it all into portions and shove it in the freezer and I generally make things like my arabiata sauce, Indian or Thai curries, Mexican chilies, um, anything really that I can freeze. And so this is great for that. And also, if I'm making something tried and tested for dinner and it's not too heavy, I'll make four portions so we can have it for lunch the following day. So that's really good. And it's always handy to be able to cook for more people because at the moment we have nobody coming into our houses, but in the future, we might be cooking for more than two. So bearing in mind these are just my first impressions, the only couple of downsides I can think of is obviously if you have an air fryer or an electric pressure cooker, you may not need, or you probably don't need the nine in one. I just love the idea of this because I always wanted an instant pot and I always wanted an air fryer, but I just do not have the space for two big things in my kitchen and this does all of it for you. So anyway, the biggest downside of this is you need space and I would honestly say you need to rearrange your kitchen unless you have like a really big kitchen or a huge kitchen island this would be perfect on an island by the way you need to sort of rearrange your kitchen a bit because it's like a microwave you're never really going to put it away if you put it away you're not going to use it and it's just too heavy to like cart in and out of cupboards and things like that so 
you would need to have it out all of the time and the other thing is if you have low kitchen cupboards like we do the lid wouldn't open properly that may not seem like a problem but this comes with two lids so this is a detachable lid and it essentially is the lid you would use for pressure cooking steaming slow cooking pretty much anything you use like a regular saucepan casserole dish lid for this is like a grill so this is the air fryer part you use you shut this lid when you're frying baking roasting whatever and the reason i think this is not detachable is because you cannot wash the outside of this unit you cannot like you wouldn't put your grill under the tap and so that's why this is attached so you do need space i normally have mine pushed further towards the sink that's the only space i have in my kitchen but for the purpose of this video i've put it here so that's the lid and obviously everyone gets that this is the main pot it's a non-stick pot so always use wooden or silicon spoons and spatulas this pretty much always sits inside the unit you cook in it i've sauteed stuff in here like a regular pan you roast things in it whatever this is always in there this is the frying basket. I don't know if these are the right words, but this is the frying basket and it comes with a trivet, which you can pull off. I'm not going to. These are all a bit wet, so I've just washed them. And this also sits inside the pot when you're frying things, baking, roasting, whatever. You don't have to use that. You can also use, this is like the two tier racks. So they kind of clip on. You never have it touching the base, so these legs sort of stop this from touching the base. You get another one if you wanted two things and you just clip it on like this and you can do two rows of roasting. I did um, some stuffed mushrooms and vegan sausages the other day and I noticed the ones on the bottom didn't cook as quickly as the ones on the top. And I also just used some foil because you can. I put the mushrooms on some foil because they were stuffed with couscous so I didn't want it to all like fall apart. So that was great because then I didn't have to wash the pot. <laughs> One thing that I do need to buy though is I have oven gloves like these, like the big fat glove, like ones that look like mittens and I find it really hard to get the pots out because these are so fat. So I've seen like the little silicon like things that kind of just cover your fingertips i feel like they'd be easier because if you're frying something for example air frying you need to kind of pull this out and toss the basket every so often if it's not in one layer so if you're doing chips for example but my workaround around that is just using these silicon um what's this called not a spatula tongs or whatever these are called right as long as they're silicon or wooden it's fine somebody also asked me if this is suitable for one person and i i would say yes you probably you might want a smaller one like the six liter as opposed to the seven and a half because don't forget you can always batch cook you can cook for other people but i would say it is really good for one or two people or a small family because you don't need to turn on your whole oven if you're just heating up I don't know, like a burger for example like a frozen burger you just do it in this and i believe don't quote me on this this uses less energy so that's obviously great the only two things i can think of that i wouldn't really cook in here are lasagna obviously <laughs> and maybe a stir fry but apart from that this pretty much does everything that your cooker and your oven can do or like a shepherd's pie or a cottage pie or whatever right but i have read that you can buy oven proof dishes and you can put them in there i don't have anything small enough that would fit but if i was to buy something you can actually cook it in that so that's really good if you have, were to get like a little round i don't know like pyrex dish or something you could maybe make like a little round lasagna i don't know <laughs> but yeah i can't think of anything else that like loads of people asked me but i will i'm happy to film like a follow up video to this if I get loads more questions but yeah that's pretty much all I can think of so the people that say they're too scared to use it or too overwhelmed honestly just do the pressure test and just refer to this little booklet because it's really really good and once you turn it on you just figure out how to sort of set it to like bake or roast or pressure or whatever it's so simple to use like honestly if you can use like a mobile phone like you literally just press temperature and set it to the temperature you want we press the time and it does it in increments of one minute the one thing i have noticed actually is it only does the oven increments in five degrees but i i think it says if like, the packaging says 200 degrees always put this on 195 because it's 
a bit more powerful than a regular oven and I made some vegan chicken nuggets in here the other day which we'll see in a minute and it said 15 minutes on the packaging and I did them in nine minutes I think so it works faster on a slightly lower temperature just keep an eye on it so yeah once you familiarize yourself with the settings and how to stop start it you can just wing it I pretty much wing most things in life especially when I'm cooking and I do the same with this so far so good, I've not had any disasters, but definitely do the pressure test. The other thing I was gonna say is when you are frying or grilling, you can just literally open this, check up on your stuff, toss it if need be, turn it around, put the lid back on and it will resume again. So that's really handy, so you don't need to wait for it to be done and then realize it's burnt or whatever. You can keep checking it if you're not familiar with it, which is basically what I do. But anyway, I'll leave the model name and the link for it down below in the description box, so make sure you check that out. But also I filmed a few clips of me using this over the past couple of days. This is just me testing it for the first time. I'm by no means a pro, so I'm gonna insert this footage here. Bear in mind, I wasn't planning to film. I was literally just experimenting with this, trying to use it for the first time and cook my dinner. And so you can sometimes hear the washing machine on in the background and my light bulb had blown in the kitchen so the lighting's not very good so just bear with me I will film like proper recipe videos or whatever if you want them or like just show you how I use this once I familiarize myself a little bit more just let me know in the comments and if you have any more questions please let me know if you want to know any more about the challenge I set myself to try and use all nine functions within two weeks I think I said um, follow me on Instagram because I have been posting everything on Instagram and saving it to a highlight on my profile called Ninja Foodie so it's all there for you to see but anyway I'll insert the clips here for you to watch so tonight I'm going to try and roast some veg and use a new setting but I also want to try and cook all of my dinner in just one pot so I'm going to roast the veg first then I'm going to just add I think you use the saute setting or the sear setting for these for Vera plant steaks and then I might even depending on the time and how long this takes make like garlic sauteed cavolo nero I haven't decided about that yet but first up I'm just going to spray some rapeseed oil or olive oil like I normally use on this and season it with salt and pepper just like you normally would in an oven so I've added it all in now I can't stir with my left hand so bear with me but I also threw in one and a half onions for good measure. I wanted to bulk it out because this may look like too much food for two people. <laughs> and it's because I try and like bulk cook. So while I'm roasting the veggies, I thought I'd roast enough for lunch tomorrow and then we'll have it like as a warm salad or with something else. So I just thought I'd roast it all together while I'm here. So here we go. So for the bacon roast function, you literally just use the lid that's attached. I'm gonna close the lid. Then I'll turn the unit on. I've already moved this to bacon roast, but you can just move it around to whichever setting you're gonna use. So for me, it's bacon roast. The temperature's actually fine, 190. It could maybe do with being 100 and, no, 200. I'd normally put my oven on high. I don't really look at the temperature, but if you wanted to like lower it, you could. And then for time, press time, that flashes and I'm going to set it for 30 minutes, but I will check it sort of every 15 minutes if I can and start I just wanted to show you if you don't have like a heat resistant worktop which I don't because this, this is actually a really old worktop that we've covered in marble vinyl <laughs> I just have this I've just decided to keep out next to my ninja because this is like real marble it's a serving board it's very heavy but then when I'm taking like the crisper or the trays out I can put it straight on here without worrying about burning my worktop there's about five minutes to go, so I thought I'd come and check on my veg. Oh. oh, wow. Oh, I think some of the onion's a bit burnt. Maybe I didn't put enough oil in. Right, let me give it a stir and just have a little look and check. I have to apologise for the lighting in my kitchen. It's really bad, but I've given it a quick stir, and I think I didn't put enough oil in, but also, I feel like they're probably cooked. I'm just going to grab a fork and just try a potato, just see, because everything else is fine if it's a little bit undercooked. Okay, so the potato looks cooked, but it definitely isn't. It's still a bit raw, so I think I need to turn the temperature down and put it in for longer. I think I might have put it on too high. But oh well, we live and we learn. I also feel like there wasn't enough oil on the veggies, so I've sprayed a little bit more, and this time I'm going to check every 10 minutes, and I've turned it down to... 175 if it will focus. 
So my veggies are finely cooked. I think it would have taken maybe 45 minutes or an hour if I'd have put it on a lower temperature, but they look a little bit burnt. I think that's because of the onion. And now I have put the sear saute setting on. I'm going to just use the same pot because I'm not gonna obviously wash it in between. There's no point. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of olive oil. Oh, as you normally would. That's probably a bit too much. I'm going with my Cadlo Nero. I had about two thirds of the pack, so I'll just put it all in, because again, we'll probably have it in like a warm salad type thing tomorrow. Half of it. And while that kind of wilts, I'm gonna go in with my crushed garlic. I've used three very large cloves. This is not a recipe by any stretch of the imagination. I just wing everything in life. It's very hard to stir in my left hand, and I feel like a bit my right up in the face of the camera. So there we go, those are the greens. This is the roast veg. I've thrown my steaks in there, they should almost be done to be honest. I've left it on a high heat and on the sear saute function. I think I probably should have used these for the steak, but I didn't want to wash them up, so this is fine. This is how I kind of cook them in a frying pan anyway, it's just a bit deeper. And there we have it all cooked in one pot how good does this look apart from the gravy obviously i just used a kettle and gravy granules for that i'm not that fancy but if you were that way inclined you could probably use all the leftover juices <laughs> from the steak and the veg if you wanted to make it in there but no we just did it in the kettle so there we go I'm so sorry about the washing machine that you may be able to hear in the background. There's nothing I can do about it because I need to cook now because we have an electrician coming around in a bit. But today I thought I would air fry some of these corn crispy nuggets. And for that, you just need to use the main big pot that comes inside this Ninja. Oh, whoops. And then the air frying basket. You can use the reversible rack, this one, but I'm just gonna do it all in one. And then I just toss it every so often with these they're silicon but you can also take the basket out and give it a shake okay, so these are in and they've been sprayed i'll turn the unit on as you can see and oh it's already set to air crisp this time i'm going to turn the temperature down to 180 i think 185 maybe and set the time to 10 minutes and i'll check maybe two or three times in that time so I'm just going to shut the lid like so and 185, 10 minutes and press start. There we go. So there we go. Perfectly crisp chicken nuggets, vegan ones obviously. I've also just put in some leftover vegetables just to crisp up and kind of heat up to have with this but also just to let you know these only took 10 minutes and the packet instructions said 15 because i think this is a lot more powerful and also don't forget we're kind of frying them essentially rather than baking them so these are the vegetables that were left over from yesterday and they only took like three minutes i just wanted to warm them up really just to sort of play with my ninja foodie a bit more yeah it looks like a bit of a beige meal but to be honest um, i didn't have anything to make the salad like i wanted to and i just wanted to experiment a bit more with my ninja foodie but as you can see this is all perfectly cooked and these are really warm i only literally put them in for like two and a half minutes but yeah very happy with this i really hope you found that helpful please leave any questions you have in the comments down below and i'll try my hardest to answer them but thank you for watching i'll see you very soon bye